Hello, my name is Dale Larner. I'm the author of Vincent Alias Jack, the true story of how Vincent Van Gogh became Jack the Ripper. Welcome to my Kickstarter video. Believe me, I know how crazy this concept comes across. But the evidence is there. This is a true story. And I also understand that some may have suspicions about me, about my motives for this, thinking perhaps that I've slapped something together to make a quick buck. But that's not the case. And I think it's important to share with you that this has been a very long journey. I made the initial discovery that led to all this back in 2004. I had uh, found a hidden image in a Van Gogh painting that related to Jack the Ripper. And I know that that sounds crazy too, but once again, it's true. It turned out to be the face of Mary Jane Kelly, a Jack the Ripper victim. And seeing that face at that time, and I had the same response you may be having, that it is very crazy. And I actually set it aside for two years. At which point I then came back to it in 2006 and asked the question, why didn't I look into that more? And I started a preliminary kind of look into the different sides, the Van Gogh side of uh, digging in more to his life, what was he doing during the Jack the Ripper period, and then the Jack the Ripper murders and the details of that, and trying to just see, is this even possible? Because I was very skeptical of this. Van Gogh was my favorite artist, and I didn't want this to be true. I just wanted to paint and, uh, you know, admire his kinds of painting, his style, and, uh, and just keep painting. But uh, I had to know. And I was surprised to be digging into this, and even from the beginning, where the question of, is this even possible, those doors kept opening that I thought would be shut. And, uh, and digging further, the doors kept opening. And it went from possible to probable to, is, is this true? And is this really the case? And then, you know, it blew my mind to finally conclude Vincent Van Gogh was Jack the Ripper. It just seemed impossible, of course. And uh, I had a decision to make as I was going through that process over just a few months of looking in into that was, if I find this to be true, am I gonna write a book about it? Because I had already been on the path of becoming a writer and following this dream uh, for quite a while. And I determined, yes, of course, I'll, I'm going to write this book. And I uh, then jumped into the research. And about a year later, I decided there's so much to go through that I need to leave my job in IET, which is what I did. And I, it took another two years to complete the research, which, uh, as you can imagine, is a lot to go through, especially on the Van Gogh side. Not just biographies and what is, has been analyzed and deducted since his death way back, um, but all of the information available in the, the primary source area to go to his letters. He, over 800 of his letters exist, and you've got another 100 or so of letters written to him, and interviews, and it, it's just a lot of information, as you can imagine. But, but also on the Jack the Ripper side, there's a huge amount of information, uh, the police reports, and then also the individual uh, in the information on each of the murders and uh, the newspaper articles which I searched out and analyzed and combed through over 700 newspaper articles of the time. And, but then also there's the Jack the Ripper letters. There's approximately uh, 240 of those and I felt it was important to compare the Jack the Ripper letters to the Van Gogh letters uh, you know, in a thorough way with content and timing and also visually and uh, that took a long time. So it took a total of three years to complete the research, and then it still took another two and a half years to finish the writing. And I completed the book on November the 9th, 2011. And the importance of that date for me was that is the anniversary date of Mary Kelly's murder. I only saw that coming about a week before that. I kept setting the deadline, and that kind of stuff is kind of magical. I like that. It's fun. So then, having the book done, that same day, I sent out the first query letter, the first pitch to a literary agent, and 11 months later, I finally had an agent. It, it took over 
100, exactly 100 agents to pitch to, to acquire an agent. It then took about the same period of time, and then I no longer had an agent. And during that same time, I was also looking for a job and didn't find one in time and went broke, unfortunately. But thanks to the help of others and finding a job eventually, I got back on my feet. But I still had the problem of debt that I had acquired during that time period. And I had to declare bankruptcy. That wasn't good. So this hasn't just been a long journey. It's been a difficult journey. But then moving forward there, uh, finally reached the point in time where it's uh, turn back to the book and find a way to get this out to the public so that everyone can see that this is a true story. And uh, I started to analyze what's the best way forward. It would be natural to think the best way forward is to get back out there and start pitching to agents again. Just give it another shot. After all, there's plenty of stories of writers who've been rejected over and over again only to finally succeed. So I looked back at that time period and I looked back at those 100 agents that I pitched to and I think it's worth noting that only two of those agents even bothered to request the manuscript. One was my agent, the other was an agent that thought it was fiction and upon learning it was nonfiction, they rejected it. And then uh, similarly, the my agent pitching to editors at publishing houses, the results were very much the same. So I concluded with all of that that there's a kind of barrier of disbelief due to the concept that uh, causes those in the publishing world not to even want to look at it. They think it's some kind of internet hoax, we live in the age of fake news, it's some kind of uh, hoax being played on them and they don't want any part of it. So I think to pursue that route again would only be an exercise in futility and would end up the same way. So I decided not to do that. Fortunately, during that same time period where I was seeking to obtain a publisher, I was also trying to find any way I could to get the story to break. That Vincent Van Gogh was Jack the Ripper. And I had some good results on that. It uh, showed that people were interested and fascinated in the concept. And uh, one of the tricks I used one time was I wrote an article on BuzzFeed, you know, five reasons why Vincent Van Gogh was Jack the Ripper. And then I went over on Reddit and I just pointed to that article. And it started to rise on both websites. And within 24 hours, the BuzzFeed article had 43,000 views on it. But over on Reddit, they have moderators, and a moderator came along, and he ended that saying it was, you know, I'm self-promoting my book, and it stopped that rise. But I, what it did show was the a good indicator that people are interested and fascinated by this concept, if you can just get to them directly. And that's why I'm choosing to go the self-publishing route and just get it out there to the public so people can judge for themselves the validity of this book. I wanted this to be a printed book as opposed to an ebook, so I'm using CreateSpace. And the idea is once the book is ready that uh, it will be available on Amazon in the US and Canada and the UK and throughout Europe. But because of the way CreateSpace calculates its royalties based on the page size and because my book is huge, it's basically impossible to put it out as is. So I've been forced to split it into two, so it will be two books. And this Kickstarter project is for book one. And the reason for this Kickstarter project is to obtain the funds necessary to pay for the permissions. I used a lot of resources, the images and quotes, to make the case, and it can be quite expensive. And the idea is then uh, meeting the goal on this Kickstarter to have book one available in April, and then after that to do another Kickstarter project for book two and within a couple of months have book two available. As for what's contained in the book, I've provided just a few of the matches on this Kickstarter page. I've also provided a synopsis which gives a kind of broad view of the book, of both the books. And if you're looking for additional information, you can go over to the book website at vincentaliasjack.com and you can uh, have a look at the uh, hidden images in the Van Gogh painting, the irises, and there's also a, a radio interview that might answer some of your questions that you have. But really, this is all just a, a taste of what's in the book. Uh, the amount of evidence provided is uh, far beyond what anyone has ever put forward for a suspect before. And this is for good reason. 
because Vincent Van Gogh was the actual killer. Now it's important to know that uh, Van Gogh was not famous during his lifetime. In fact, just the opposite. He was hardly known by anyone. And the way he dressed shabbily and uh, his demeanor, he would have fit in well with the uh, poor in the East End uh, district uh, of uh, London where the Jack the Ripper murders occurred. It's, you know, once you take away that facade of fame uh, that's in front of Van Gogh, you see just a man and you, you then assess him based on his uh, words and his deeds and it becomes very clear that Vincent Van Gogh was Jack the Ripper. Because I believe I have solved the Jack the Ripper case, I view this journey as being historical. And I invite you to join in and be part of history. By choosing the $25 reward, you'll help me to reach my goal. And once book one is available, it will immediately be sent to you. I feel confident that once you see all of the evidence, and once the world sees it, the conclusion will be the same, that Vincent Van Gogh was indeed Jack the Ripper. Thank you for watching.